Olga. Mother, why can't Bill Turner come over? You may invite him tomorrow and I'll go get dressed. Never throw yourself at a man, sis. Especially one you've only known for 48 hours. I'm not throwing myself at anyone. Why all this fuss about an old logging foreman? Well, the day one of your heartthrobs makes as much money for this family as Matt Todman, I will personally make a fuss over it. Uh-uh. I know. Wait till the guests arrive. Uh -huh. Where's Heath? Oh, last time I saw him, he was out in Smithy cleaning rifles. Well, now, the least we can offer Mr. and Mrs. Todman is the courtesy of our home with the entire family present. Mm -hmm. We make over him too much. He's liable to ask for a raise. Nick, if he can do with that lumber camp what he claims he can do, I think he's entitled to a percentage. Oh, well, sounds like them now. Well, well, Matt, it's been a long time. Welcome Dude, to the rest. Nice to see you. Oh, have a good trip. Nick, fine, yes. Ah. Fine. There we are. How nice to have you. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. You're a stable horse, huh? Yeah. Well, it'll be a change to you from the high country. Besides, yeah. while the men are talking business, we can do some shopping in Stockton. Yes, I'd like that very I'm much. sure you'd like to freshen up. I would. Thank you. Sit down, Matt. Well, now, Matt, how about a dust cutter after that long trip, huh? Sounds fine. You name it, we got it. Uh, whiskey's fine. All right. All right, Matt. Let's hear it. All right. Oxen and horses take half a day to haul cut logs down to the river. Now, a flume from the highest cutting stand will bring the logs down in less than an hour. A flume? You give me enough money, time, and men, I'll give you a layout that'll make you one of the biggest lumber producers in California. What'll it cost? 50000 or so. What? It'll return that five times over in two years. Now, you think pretty big, Matt. Well, you're the one who's been asking for ways to increase production. <laughs> Tell me, have you, uh, have you ever handled anything like this before? No. You think you can handle this? If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. George, put these away in the gun room for me. Oh, Heath, come in a moment. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Matt Tobin, this is my brother Heath. into you. That's Matt Bentel. Words of Andersonville and Matt Bentel of Cardison Prison. They were two of a kind. What that animal did to us prisoners, I swore if I ever found him again, I'd kill him. in Cardison prison. You know that. Seven months and the hell been tell made. Keith, the war has been over for years. Well, not long enough to forget. Maybe you don't want to forget. Jared, well, maybe you can tell me how to forget maggoty food and putrid water and floggings for complaining about it. Or how to forget friends who died from exposure and other friends who died because medical help was refused. I'm not saying I could forget, but I wouldn't be out to murder Todman. His name is Ben Tell. All right, Ben Tell. But what will killing him do besides get you hanged? Don't stand there and defend him to me. I'm not defending him. I'm protecting you. Jared, there were 740 of us fighting in New Mexico. Almost half ended up in Carterson. Less than 100 walked out when the war was over. There's not a jury in the state that would hang me. That's the important thing, whether or not you'd hang for murder. That seems to be Jared's concern. Well, it's not mine. I pray to God it isn't in any of my sons to commit cold, deliberate murder. And that's what it would be, Heath. Cold, calculated, deliberate murder. 
Now, you can put any other word to it you want, but that's what it would be. Well, for a start, how about the word justice? Words paid for what he did at Andersonville. He was hanged. Yes, he was hanged, but by the government and after a trial. Bentel was brought up on the same charges and cleared. You just don't understand, do you? No one could understand that hadn't lived through a place like Carterson. We can understand, but when does the hate end? When your father was killed, I hated as passionately as you do right now. Oh, believe me, I did. And for just as vivid and long-lasting a reason as you... Well, I... I stopped hating. I don't know if I'll ever really forgive, but... I stopped hating because of what it was doing to me. Because I had too much around me to love to go on hating. Look around you, Heath. Matt Bentel is upstairs in the guest room. Is it really in you to go up there and kill him? The breeding stock at Santa Inez. I'll ride down this afternoon and take a look at it. Nice day, wasn't it? Ironic. The war's been over for years, and now it's Matt Bantel who's a prisoner of Cardison. And this poor wife. You only have to look at her to know what she's been through all these years. Matt Bantel, working for us. Well, as soon as we pay him off, he won't be. Nick, do you really think that firing him will solve anything? Well, do we have any other choice? Perhaps we have. What are you thinking about, Jared? That it's hard to hate a man when you really get to know him. Sparkly, you can contact me at the hotel in Stockton if you'd like to look over the accounts. I want to apologize to you for my son. I understand why he did it. I won't say I don't sympathize with him, but... I appreciate your frankness. Matt, we'd like you to stay on, if you want to. I'm sure you'd like to talk it over. They asked me to stay. Oh, you're not going to. The first time it's our choice. It's our choice, but... She wants you to stay because she needs you to run For her... For whatever reason, it's our choice. And then another... another Heath Barkley... will try to kill you? It means a place to settle in. Oh. It means a home. I don't want a home if it means any harm to you. I want it for you. Oh, Matthew, please. We're staying. It's an ambitious undertaking. No one can deny that. And an expensive one. Seems to me an awful lot of money to tie up on a gamble that we might finish by winter, among other reasons. I can finish it and have logs started down by the first snow. Nick, it's the only way we can get these upper timber stands to pay off. All right. Now, considering everything, can we get enough men that'll work for Matt Bentel? That'll be your problem. You hire them, I'll handle them and work them. All right. But you're going to need help, Matt. Heath will go with you. You have to go. The devil I will. Just how quickly do you think word of his being here will get around? Well, I hope it's mighty quick. And do you know what that would mean? Yes, that somebody will try to balance the scales. Exactly. And if they do, it'll be because of you. So you want me to go with him and hold his hand? Well, why doesn't Nick go? Because you were at Carlison. And you're the one that might recognize the man if he tried to kill him. You go with him. You go with him. You eat with him. You work with him. You live with him. And you pray to God to rid yourself of the hate that's inside you. Because unless you do, that hate will eventually destroy you. He, do you want to hate so? Do you want the memory of Carter's in prison to gnaw at you forever? What we're asking you to do isn't supposed to be easy. Show us what you inherited from your father. Show us some of Tom Barkley's guts. <laughs>
Oh, we should be at camp in time for supper. I've been in his saddle since sunup. Can't you move any faster? If you'd like to ride in the buggy, I'll trade with you. Just move out. Barkley! There's something you'd best keep in mind when I agreed to stay on here. It was with the understanding that nothing was to change. I still boss this operation. That was made clear enough for my family before we left. Just so you don't forget. That's my trouble, Bentel. I can't forget. some more men coming up as soon as they're hired. Now, in case you're wondering, this is Heath Barkley over here, one of the owners. Came up to look things over and uh, look after me. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, there are some who think that might be necessary after I tell you the rest of what I have to say. For the past year, you've known me as Todman. My name is Bentel. Matt Bentel. Anyone who finds that name unfamiliar, I was commander of Cardison Prison during the war. Anyone who'd like to get paid off can do so when they're finished eating, the rest of you. Can look forward to things being the same as they always were. That means long hours, plenty of hard work. I need this job. But not so much as to work with the likes of Matt Bentel. Do you know where the payoff is, Donlan? I should. I worked here a long time before you came. Anybody else? Start clearing for the flume tomorrow. Bentel. Do you listen to me close, boy? Because I'm going to tell you one time only. Not that we're in camp, the name is Mr. Bentel. Or Matt, either one. I don't take that attitude from the others. I surely won't take it from you. It's quite a chance you took telling them who you are. I'm through with hiding. They'll find out soon enough when the new men show up. You better start growing eyes in the back of your head. That's why you're here, isn't it? To protect my back? Well, you're not making it any easier. I didn't intend to make things easier. How can you be sure I won't be looking the other way when... I guess that's something you'll just have to fight out with your own conscience all by yourself. Isn't it? Stop. They've had lots of trouble. Ain't you read? Read what? Matt Bantel. So that's what happened to him. That's the reason the Barclays are down here in Modesto trying to hire. Ain't many people want to truck with Matt Bantel. Makes no difference to me. 
Job is a job as far as I'm concerned. Well, you won't have any trouble getting hired on. You ain't got much competition. <laughs> For what I care who is boss. Seems to make a difference to quite a few others. Pollock need work. His need save money for to bring his Nietzsche to America. All right. Twenty dollars a month and keep. That is fine for Pollock. Sign here or make your mark. Sign on? We quit three days ago. I see. And now you want everybody to know why, is that it? I'm going to make sure they do know. You're a little late, friend. There's something known as the newspaper. It's got the whole story. Well, I want you to know what I think of you and your family for hiring the life of Matt Bantel. I don't give a hoot what you think. The war's over. Thanks, boys. You just made yourself kind of unpopular in these parts. It's no matter. We're just figuring on leaving town pretty soon anyway. Yeah, we're going to do some logging up in timber country, Mr. Barkley. You don't say. That is, unless you filled that tally sheet already. Well, now I'm grateful to you on two counts. <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is, I got to get Romeo out of circulation here for a while. Oh. Game leg and all. Little brother Gil here is just too much of a hand with the ladies. <laughs> Well, his leg didn't seem to bother his fighting any. I don't see why it should bother his logging. Sign on, boys. Well, the new men are here. How many? A dozen or so. Your brother's going to have to do better than that if he expects to get that flume finished by fall. Well, under the existing circumstances, I think he's doing all right. Where are they? The mess tent. First man. Name? Uh, Anton Pollock. Pollock, you ever work in a lumber camp? No, sir. You uh, handle an axe? Sure. In Romania, I, I use axe all the time. Got plenty colors from war car. Right, get the name. I'll put him in Jim McCurran's crib. Next man. Name? Morley. Howdy, Abe. Heath? Been a long time since Carson City. We can't use you, Abe. So what do you mean you can't use me? You had a brother in Carson. So? So he died there. You told me all about it. That's right. You told me a few things about that place yourself. We can't use you, Abe. Uh, next. Now, look, I came a long way. I said next. All right, move along. Hello, Keith. This sure is a day for being a small world, ain't it? Same goes for you as Morley, Condon. Well, hold on, Keith. We need the work. And we need the men, but you two won't do. Put them in that construction camp. They were at Carterson. We were in New Mexico together. Just send them on. Yes, sir. Small world. 
Don't you fret none about trouble from us. We don't mean no harm to Mr. Bentel here. Was Mr. Bentel's doing? I still got my leg. It's a stiff one, but it's flesh and bone and blood instead of wood, thanks to Mr. Bentel and the Reb surgeon that saved it. Next. section should have been finished last week. Well, with a new man, we'll pick up some lost time. Time lost is lost for good. Well, why don't you try pushing them a little harder? I might have to, unless I can get 20 or 30 more. I can't take any more men off that cutting line. How do you suggest we get them? Well, that's not my concern. You know, Jared's offering top wages. Well, then he should start offering bonuses. You're pretty free with Barkley money. My interest is in getting this flume built. Mr. Barkley? Just a minute. Say it. Go get my horse. There are a lot of us at Cartison. I wouldn't have missed. Get my horse. Well, it looks like three ladies. Looks like easy game for it to play. Well, it's a sociable way to get to know a man, Pollock. There's always room for a pigeon. Rules of the game. Pigeon? Well, come on, sit down. <laughs> He's no feathers on Pollock. <laughs> He's friendly bunch. Yep. Strange to think somebody here may be this person who tried to kill Mr. Bentel, huh? Everybody is talking about it. It's not so strange. You cannot stop it from happening, Mr. Barkley. Talk like that could cost you your job, you know. There's no concern for Palik. Mr. Bentel is hated man. Many hate him. He will die. Good night, Barkley. Good night. Yes, dear. It's getting late.
Hey, Polly! Yeah. Take a hitch around that spike, will you? Oh, shoot. Uh. Oh. How soon will you tie in with that next section? Uh, I figure we should join up tomorrow sometime. All right, all right, let's get back to work. You know, I sure could use some extra men around here. I could use a lot more work out of the ones you've got. I'm driving them as hard as they can go. Every man's got a notch or two more in him. Now, if you can't get the work out, maybe somebody else can. Yes, sir. That makes up for everything. Well, Heath, what now? He ain't gonna turn us in. What makes you so sure? Because you remember, same as we do. From what we heard, you tried to kill him yourself. What he done the night of the escape attempt sticks in your crawl, same as it does ours. Eighteen men, Heath. Eighteen men shot down in cold blood. And you was almost one of them. I could have been one of them, too, if it hadn't been for my leg. So could Aaron if he hadn't stayed with me. But we weren't one of them. We lived. And we swore someday he'd pay for what he did. You swore he'd pay, too. You swore on the blood of the men you fought beside he'd pay. Well, Heath, what about it? <laughs> Is this going to keep us? As long as men have memories. Why won't they leave us alone? Because I was chosen to serve as commander of Curtis in prison instead of a soldier in the field. Oh, Matt, soldier. Oh, for eight years, I've heard stories about the Union soldiers and the Confederate soldiers and their devotion to the cause and their... Sacrifices and their courage. Doesn't anybody know the sacrifices and courage it took for you to do the things Cinder, you had to Cinder. do? And people crying over the memories of the war. The people only the... cry over the sorrows they know. But look at what the war did to you. No, don't, don't. Oh, Matt. If only they could know the man I'm married to. The man who's so kind and gentle and gay. And laughs so warmly. <laughs> you are brave men, Mr. Barclay, for to save Mr. Bentel's life today. But these men of Carthus in prison, 
will not forget their hate. Mr. Barclay. What is it? I came to... You came to what, Mrs. Bintel? I came to thank you for saving my husband's life. Well, it was the sorriest thing I've ever done. To make sure it doesn't happen again, I'm pulling out. Why did I think it all could change? Mrs. Bintel... Your husband started it all the day he took over that prison camp. It'll never change. My husband was more of a prisoner at Cardison than you or any of the others. Held there by armed guards with orders to shoot if he stepped over the deadline? Held there by his duty. And his duty was to put us in chains and starve us and beat us and treat us like animals. The war was almost over. The South was losing. Now, what did you expect him to do? Give what little food there was to you instead of to his own men? He had to keep you prisoner any way he could. But how did you treat one another, you prisoners? You fought like animals over what food there was, over scraps of clothing, over a place to sleep. You even fought over... over a place to die. You've got all the answers, haven't you? All I have is the other side of the story. Well, tell me the other side of the ambush where 18 men were shot down in cold blood. Oh, I remember that night. I remember what that did to my husband. To your husband? Oh. Part of him died with those men. He didn't want that to happen. He let 18 men crawl out of that tunnel. He waited until they got into the open before he gave the orders to open fire. He called out for them to go back. He waited until the last moment, and then he opened fire! I was there. I was in that tunnel. I didn't hear anybody calling out. You didn't hear anybody calling out because you were in the tunnel! <sighs> but if you had heard him yelling out, would you have surrendered? No. Neither did the others, and that's why they died. Like I said, you got answers for it all, haven't you? Yes. Enough, enough to advise you to save some of your anger for the man who informed on the men who were trying to escape. Yes. One of your fellow prisoners informed. I don't know who it was. I never found out. That's convenient, isn't it? Oh! Oh, I don't care whether you believe me or not. This is the first time that I've ever spoken of this to anybody. And it doesn't make any difference whether you believe me or not. Just speaking of it has made it easier for me. Barkley. Matthew. Where are the condoms? I ran them off Barclay Lane. You think they've gone? I do. But there'll be somebody else. Who was the informer that night at Carterson Prison? Well? Sharon Condon. You saved his brother's leg. Why he came you? to me with a deal. He 
tell me about the prison break on the condition that I'd help his brother. You squeezed every opportunity, didn't you? My job was to run Carterson as best I could. And nothing was too low? Even using medical help to get what you wanted? I had one post-doctor only. Medical supplies were practically non-existent. What I had, I used as fairly as I could. And you used it like a gun on the contents? I saw nothing wrong with using whatever means I had to get information that might keep the enemy from escaping, from possibly killing once they did escape. That's why the Condons wanted me dead. Why? But somehow the Condons have the idea that I might expose them. If you were going to do that, you would have long ago. Try again. How does one carry the deaths of 18 comrades in their conscience? <laughs> Stay, stay. I'm clearing out. Consider myself lucky Heath let us go. He let us go so we can finish our job. He wants Ben Tell dead much as we do. By now, Ben Tell's told him about. Well, oh, come on. Let's hear you put it into words. You would have died otherwise, and you know it. So I'm alive to carry this stinky your cowardice. I didn't hear no argument from you at Carterson. Well, you're getting one now. We ain't leaving. You'll forget it. I won't forget it. I can't. Not till Matt Bentel is dead. Our guns are back at camp. We couldn't get within shooting distance of him now anyway. We could if there was enough confusion. I'd kill him with my own bare hands. A fire? No. You think of a better way to start confusion in timber country? Don't know whether he believed me or not. Oh, does it make that much difference? Yes. Well... I'm sorry, Matt, but I can't feel a thing for him. That's because you have only one memory of the war. So has he, and that memory has been shaken. I feel sorry for him. I love you, Matthew Bentow. Oh, <laughs> 
of here. I told you he was crazy for starting this fire. I want Ventel. Still. Still. This is cool enough. Should be all right. If it's dropped, I'll see you in Kingdom Come. Just drive, Bentel. Five hundred degrees. Set it and clear out fast. Throw that and we'll all die. Now I said put it back.
reasonable. We gotta get out of here or we're gonna burn! I don't care! I want to kill him! Kill him! Well, I hope that means it's plenty hot, because, boy, howdy, it's cold out there. Why, Heath, it's balmy out compared to what it is up at that timber camp right now. <laughs> How about it, Heath? You want to go back? Well, maybe in the spring. Now that that flume's finished, I'd kind of like to see it in operation. Come spring, we'll have enough timber to build a new sawmill. <laughs> <laughs> How about some more brandy? <laughs> That's the most beautiful sound in the world to me, my husband's laughter. I'm very grateful to you. I'm grateful, too. I almost lost a son, but he found himself, and he's back home, and he's safe. Now then, everyone. Matt. This is just for you, Matt and Cinder. <laughs> 